The armoured suicide vehicle based improvised explosive device, or as I shall refer to them, the ASVBED, really came to the world's attention when they were heavily used by the Islamic State, ISIS, in Iraq and Syria. Basically an armoured suicide car bomb, these simple and brutally effective weapons were used by ISIS in hundreds, possibly thousands of attacks. This is the root of the perception that ASVBEDs were a weapon associated with that group, and, with ISIS territory now liberated, with the idea that they have now gone away. But this is a serious mistake. In fact, the ASVBED is just the latest evolution in a vicious trend in the use of suicide attacks, which has been increasing radically over the last 40 years. According to the University of Chicago's CPOST project, the rate of terrorist suicide attacks globally went from an average of three a year in the 1980s to about one a month in the 1990s. Between 2001 and 2003, this figure increased to about one a week, but from 2003 to 2015, that gradually increased to about one suicide bombing occurring somewhere in the world, on average, once a day. Going hand in hand with the increased use of suicide bombing as a tactic, was the use of vehicle-based attacks. According to the Office of the Director of National Intelligence in the United States, between 2009 and 2015 alone, there were 10 attempts to use V-beds within the United States itself, generally targeting areas of civilian concentration or military facilities. Bearing all this in mind, the evolution of the vehicle-based IED, or V-bed, the simple car bomb, through to the suicide V-bed, the SV-bed, and then onto the as V-bed, is obvious with hindsight. As V-beds are now seeing a similar escalation in usage as non-state groups begin to appreciate the capabilities such weapons possess, and my suspicion is that their use will only become more common in the future. Initially, the proliferation was with groups affiliated to ISIS, with as V-bed attacks being undertaken by Boko Haram in Nigeria against government forces in 2018, and by Al-Shabaab in Somalia in 2019. However, by 2017, the Taliban began using as V-beds, and recently were using captured Humvees as as V-beds against the Afghan army, and in considerable numbers. These were all great examples of the use of as V-beds as offensive breakthrough vehicles. The bomb literally blows a hole in a defensive line and allows follow-up forces to exploit. And this is a similar tactic that was used by groups in Syria early on in the civil war there. However, as beds also make particularly effective defensive weapons in disruptive offensives. You may have seen the following footage when it came out earlier this year. A Syrian regime T-72 is engaging Turkish-backed rebel fighters. Then it is charged by an ACV-15 APC, a lightly armed and armoured vehicle, certainly no match for a tank. And yet it succeeds in driving the tank off. The incident led to caustic comments about the ability of Syrian tankers, but for anyone who has faced ACV beds, The plight of the tank crew inspires some sympathy. They almost certainly thought they were facing an ASVBED attack, hence their panicked reaction. In fact, that may well have been the case, and the FSA vehicle failed to detonate. Certainly the vehicle's flat-out charge to its target is a classic indicator. A great example of the fear ASVBEDs, perhaps even just a fake, driving off superior forces. There is also a perception that ISIS resorted to these as a desperation measure, as Western and Russian air power prevented them from using other, more conventional military tactics against their enemies. Since the taking of ISIS's last territorial holdings in 2019, I've actually heard the view expressed that the Azvibid is an aberration, like the kamikazes used by Japan in the Second World War, a weapon used by fanatics as a desperation measure when no other viable weapon system or counter to conventional military tactics was available. This assumption is incorrect. These were ISIS's most lethal and feared weapons in many of their campaigns before the intervention of outside forces. ISIS had factories all across its conquered territory manufacturing these weapons, as well as a development program that constantly worked to improve upon them and the tactics for their employment. In Syria and Iraq, ISIS would often have these weapons stashed in locations for when advancing forces got close. They might have been there for weeks. Then, when the enemy were in the vicinity they'd drive out an attack. This was the usual hallmark of an asv attack, the sudden appearance of the vehicle and a frantic dash at its target. So even with air cover and spotting, the defenders would only have seconds to react. With a weapon of such simple premise, close with a target and detonate, it's easy to assume that asv follow a fairly standard pattern. But in fact, ISIS and other users have demonstrated weapon development programs to enhance and improve their effectiveness, especially in the face of improved defensive measures.
An obvious methodology, ISIS and other groups did on occasion use multiple vehicle attacks. This, needless to say, could make stopping the attack getting through very difficult. By 2016, ISIS was utilising two-man ASV beds, with a machine gunner on the roof to provide defensive suppression for the attack. This would suppress defenders, especially anti-armour weapons. ISIS also began to use ASV beds disguised as conventional vehicles. Initial attempts were simply painting fake windows and livery on external armour, obviously hoping to confuse the defenders as to what they were really dealing with. But by the campaign for Raqqa in 2017, ISIS were actually mounting armour inside vehicles so as to much more effectively disguise the ASV bed. ISIS aren't the only ones to apply new technology. This picture is of an ASV bed built by the Turkish-backed HTS group, which has been fitted with digital cameras to give the driver better visibility while cutting down on vision slits and therefore improving his protection. Also, ISIS and other groups have made great use of drones, normally simple and cheap hobbyist models, both to plan attacks, provide reconnaissance, and then record the attack for propaganda purposes. Another thing that ISIS certainly worked on was really big ASV beds. Stopping vehicles like this with close-range weapons is extremely hazardous. With each ASV bed essentially being unique because of the use of so many different types of vehicle as a basis, you really need to have a broad-based defence to stop in them. One advantage the defender generally does have is that an ASV bed driver normally has very limited visibility. An ASV bed will normally attack something it can see clearly. At a personal level, that means getting away from obvious targets, especially things that would be a priority target for the driver. Tanks, vehicles, important buildings, things like that. The best way to counter an ASV bed attack is good intelligence. Hearing about them from a local population before they attack is the best thing by far. Obviously, local conditions and the population are the key issue here, but generally most people do not want a massive mobile bomb going off in their neighbourhood. Failing to head off an attack before it develops, the best thing to do is to pick it up as the earliest opportunity. Again, no great surprise. For this, observation devices, and especially tactical UAVs, are utterly invaluable. This allows the defender to bring the correct weapon to bear, or, at the very least, to get clear of the threat area. This is not just useful at static positions, but also for mobile convoys. Defending a convoy from an ASV bed can be a nightmare. You need the maximum amount of warning to get clear of the threat. Note that despite a strifing by the protecting helicopter in this clip, this SV bed still gets to a target. In Syria and Iraq, certainly, the major anti-SV bed measures were earthworks. Even an overnight stop would mean a JCB or a digger would be out digging a trench and throwing up an earthwork berm. This would also serve as cover from an infantry attack, but the primary aim was to stop suicide vehicles. For long-term static positions, these defences would get increasingly ornate. The trenches would get moved further out and dug deeper, and the position would feature several fake entrances. These would funnel into killing zones and areas with earth banks to contain the blast of a trapped SV bid. It's important to also have some idea of what sort of vehicle chassis might be available to a potential ASV bed user, because then you have an idea of just how extensive trenches need to be. Against a converted civilian vehicle, a trench a few feet deep will be enough. But it won't stop something like this. A number of factions in the Middle East have converted APCs and even tanks into ASV bids. Stopping these literally requires the digging of an anti-tank trench. Obviously, digging up the whole neighbourhood may not be an option, so other improvised constructions such as check hedgehogs and stingers can be useful in stopping an ASV bed. Anti-ISIS forces in Iraq and Syria certainly use stingers as one of these measures. These have to be heavy duty in dealing with Humvee or Russian army truck tyres, however. Additionally, minefields can be very effective at stopping ASV beds. A vehicle loaded with several tonnes of explosives tend to react badly to hitting a mine. Of course, use of minefields can be an issue politically. Standoff anti-tank missiles can be great counters, as long as they are in the right position and have time to react. The same principle applies for air power. However, with this in mind, any competent attack by an SVB user will aim to exploit minimum exposure to air cover so as to achieve a success. The standard weapons to be found on a patrol or checkpoint, small arms and short-range anti-tank weapons, quite frankly have problems stopping an ASV bid. The sheer speed that ASV bid attacks take place at means that an RPG gunner, for example, would both need great skill and nerves of steel 
to hit such a target. Considering the explosive mass most ASV beds carry, such an action would itself be hazardous. However, it's safe to say that anyone under ASV bed attack shoots at it with whatever they've got to hand. Theoretically, you can shoot at vision slits or tyres, but hitting those on a speeding vehicle is optimistic at best. Plus, it depends entirely on the sort of design you're dealing with. If an ASV bed attack comes along a road, which is normally favoured as these vehicles tend to be heavy and getting up a good head of steam is useful for them to close quickly with their target. Placing obstructions on the roadway that require the SVB to manoeuvre around it can allow you to play a defence against these vehicles that forces them to present a more favourable target. You can also use terrain to your advantage. As already said, these vehicles tend to be heavily loaded, so hills and broken terrain can be difficult for them to negotiate. The key measure is to keep an ASV bed as far away from its prospective target as possible. Again, this seems obvious, but actually providing sufficient de- defence in depth at every possible location is problematic. Any military or security force facing the prospect of an ASV bed attack on their post should have everyone know immediate exits to get clear of the target area and a rally point. Any such retreat should see personnel disperse and not stay bunched up. Groups of people draw attention of v-beds i've already mentioned some of the areas where as v-beds are in active use and i thought it might be useful to just give some indications of countries that may see them deployed in future their simplicity of construction effectiveness difficulty encountering and spectacular propaganda value means that as v-beds have already begun to proliferate around the globe obviously afghanistan syria somalia and nigeria are all countries which feature an as v-bed or v-bed threat I'll add to that Iraq, areas which are still very much rife with ISIS, though I think the risk is diminished as local security seems to be getting a grip. Countries that Boko Haram operate in, other than Nigeria, are Chad, Cameroon and Niger. Any of these, I would suspect, have the potential for an ads V-bid attack. We can possibly add to that the Philippines, which has seen V-bid and SV-bid attacks. The Philippine Army's crackdown on the situation means that I wouldn't be surprised if we were to see an asv bit attack at some point there. Of particular concern is Mozambique. Here the group Ansar al Sunnah, who I've done a video on and we'll link to at the end. They appear to have links to ISIS and have been running right in the north of the country, as well as launching raids into neighbouring Tanzania. Though there is no record of their use of sv bits, should outside forces become involved which is entirely likely considering that there are billions of dollars of natural gas in the area, I wouldn't be surprised if they resorted to SV bids or ASV bids to inflict casualties. Additionally, IS Central African province has been launching attacks in the Democratic Republic of Congo, fighting the UN peacekeeping force there. To be honest, any group that has access to explosives, a competent bomb builder and a mechanics workshop has the potential to build an armoured SV bed. So, though the ASVBED's most infamous user may have been reduced in significance, though they certainly have not been destroyed, the sheer simplicity and effectiveness of the weapon, as well as their propaganda value, means that they cannot be written off. For any military engaged in security or peacekeeping operations, the possibility of future ASVBED attacks should be taken seriously and planned for accordingly. I hope you found this video interesting, if perhaps a little grim. If you're interested in the topic, I highly recommend you check out the work of Hugo Kamen. He's basically the principal expert on the use of VBIDs in modern conflicts, and I'll put a link to his website in the description. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and hopefully, I'll catch you again soon.